This is the EcoFlow Smart Generator, a new product that they sent me after I asked them to. <laughs> this goes in line with all the EcoFlow stuff I've been reviewing. Their um, Delta 2 Max battery system that they sent me, uh, the original battery and one spare battery. That system will take up to two spare batteries. I purchased myself the second spare battery on their Black Friday sale. So now I have that complete system. This will interface with that as, as well as the Delta Pro and the Delta Pro Ultra series. And it will auto start itself when the battery gets to a certain percent. It's all controllable from the app. We're going to look at it today, and I'm going to walk you around this thing and show you everything that it has. This is the one side here. This is a dual fuel system here. So right here, you can plug in what they call LPG, which is propane. LPG right there. The instruction manual says that once you plug this in, it automatically shuts off the gasoline. So there's some sort of sensor in here that does that. It has a manual start, but it has an auto start too. So we're going to get to that in a minute. I put all the accessories that it came with in this bag. So it came with its own oil filling funnel and tube. We're going to put some oil in it here shortly. Screwdriver for taking off the side. Do that here in a minute. And it's got, uh, oh, that's a power cable. So that's a power cable for interfacing with one of the battery systems. That's the plug right there that's on the side of the Delta II Max system. So we'll be able to interface it there directly. And then this is the LPG cable that uh, with the regulator that goes from a, a standard like a 20 pound or 30 pound propane tank right there to the side of this unit. So here's the back side here. All of your engine guts are back there and uh, where we will fill the oil is back there. And then it has this screen. There we go. Now, this switch cuts the screen. It has an internal battery because it has auto start. So I told you about the manual start. It also has auto start and you can also start it from the app. So you turn the switch on, the screen comes on and it times out after a while. It has carbon monoxide alarm, an oil, a low oil alert. This is you uh, power the AC off and on with this button here. And then it, uh, you can reset uh, the Internet of Things uh, switch right there because it does connect to the Internet. I've already connected it to my Starlink, which is right behind the trailer over there, and to my EcoFlow app. And then with this button here, you just tap that and it would auto start itself. I, don't, I haven't put oil in it yet, but we're going to do that here in just a minute. Okay, so that's where you would connect the cable to go to one of the battery systems. And that is just a standard 120 volt 15 amp AC plug right there. So 15 amps is probably not gonna be enough to run my air conditioner in that trailer, but uh, cause that's a 30 amp plug, but we'll see what happens with that. So let's put some oil in this thing, let's start it up, see how loud it is or isn't, and we'll go from there. Fits in with that and it's got these other points here that kind of snap in to the side here, three on this side, three on this side, and then one on the bottom. So that fits all together real nicely foam for a quieting sound underneath there this is the battery it is a 1.5 amp hour 1500 milliamp hour is what it says on it so the battery was disconnected it's got these standard sae connectors right here the battery was disconnected when i got it and the instruction said open this up plug up the battery fill your oil right here and then you'll be good to go so it, it warned about not starting the unit until you had enough oil in it obviously and it also warned about not uh, putting too much oil in it always a good plan so we're going to put some oil Put that right there. Actually, I could probably just not even use that. Probably. Well, now I'm going to use it because the angle. It also says in the instruction manual, don't tilt the thing on its side when filling oil. I always did that with my other generator. But you know what? I would just tilt it back down, let it run out a little bit. Not a big deal if you know what you're doing. They're just being cautious, which they should be, and that's a good thing. So we're going to put some oil in it. The manual says to put 10W40 in it, which I always used to put SAE 30 weight in, in the generators of the past. But these new generators, they don't require such a heavy oil. This one said 10W40, so that's what we're going to put in it right now. All right, I got about, about six ounces in there. And that is just about perfect. The whole dipstick is a safe zone where the, the kind of the uh, crisscross pattern is etched on it. Not a very long dipstick, obviously. This typical these generators these size, these sizes, this size, this size, whatever I'm trying to say. So we're good there. Took about, like I said, about six ounces of oil. And the inst the uh, instruction manual does tell you does not come with oil. They say that they put oil in it, run it, and then drain it or something like that. So you have to. So there might be some residual oil in it, so it may look like it has oil, but it doesn't. So just be sure to check that. Now it does have low oil shutoff, which my my Champion generator, that's about the same size as this as far as running watts, this is an 1800 running watt with gasoline, 1.8 kilowatt running watts with gasoline, 
1.6 kilowatts running watts with propane. My champion generator that actually just died on me recently was 1800 running watts with gasoline, did not run on propane. It's the uh, Champion 2000. They say they call it a 2000 because it's 2000 watt surge, but it's not 2000 watts running. So kind of marketing there. That Champion did not have low oil cutoff and I think I ran it out of oil because it died on me one day. I was using it. I looked down, it was empty of fuel. I'm like, okay. So I went to a couple weeks later, I went to go fill it with gas and start it and it was locked up. And the champion, this champion generator that's back here, and the previous two or three champion generators I have, have always had low oil cutoff. So I just wasn't used to that. I thought it had low oil cutoff. Obviously it didn't. But this one does. It has a sensor in the front, and presumably it'll tell you in the app as well. So that's going to be handy to be able to use that for running and making sure that you have enough oil in the unit. It also says in the instructions where you switch this uh, vent on top of the gas cap to turn it off and on. Now, one thing, I just put gas in it from the gas can there, and one thing I noticed that it doesn't have that my other generator had, well, not the little one. I guess I should compare it to the little one and not this big one, but this big one here, this is the Champion generator I mentioned a minute ago. This is the electric start one. It has low oil shutoff. It has a good indicator panel on the side there, and it's got a fuel gauge on the top. You can see it's almost empty because I ran most of it out last night. So this one doesn't have a fuel indicator, so you got to be careful when you're filling it not to overfill it because the last thing you want to do is get gasoline drenched all down these electronics. So just be, just be aware of that. Here's the uh, sticker that's on the top of it. tells you all the details about it. And this thing, see, even in that picture, it looks like it has a wheel kit. This does not have a wheel kit. And it's heavier than my last, that little champion that I was carrying around with me for a long time in the back of the truck is right there. I've left it here since opening weekend of hunting season because it's dead. It's locked up. So this one's larger and heavier than that one is. This one does more than that one does, but it doesn't have wheels. And I, I swear it has a wheel kit on the pictures on the website. So I'm going to go look that up and see if maybe there's a wheel kit I can purchase for it on Amazon, pick that up, be a little easier to cart this thing around. So let's go for the in, in the inaugural starting of the thing. I'm gonna turn that off and turn this back on. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in just for the heck of it. It says once you connect this hose, that's when the fuel shuts off. All right, I can't really do that one-handed. And now, manual start in case you need it, in case the battery dies or something. Okay, hey, you know what? So it says 79% now. So when that said zero earlier, it said zero life left. Like that, that would be the indicator of how, uh, how what the percentage of the battery is, is. This is a generator. It's not a battery. So the same screen is on my, D, my Delta II batteries, Delta II Max batteries. And this said zero percent a minute ago. So I kind of assumed that would kick on after we started it and it would tell us how long it ran. But as soon as I put the fuel in, it says we have 79% left. So that is a fuel indicator. Good to know. I did not know that. So we're going to try to start it right now. Got to long press it. Okay. There it goes. First start. Had to choke itself. No problem. Probably start right up the next time. All right, now, why did it shut off? Could be just uh, new. Hold it till it beeps. Low oil alert is not flashing. It should be, should have plenty of oil. Wonder if there's a fuel shut off on it. I am in, in the app. I open up the app to check and see if there were errors and it has low oil alert. Now, it doesn't, it's not flashing on this little indicator here and it's bright out here. Maybe I just can't see it. Maybe I just can't see it. But what it says to do to reset it is to turn this power switch off and back on. So I turned it off already. I'm gonna turn it back on. There's no flashing indicator on that low oil alert thing. Okay, now it's running and now it shows, uh, okay, now it shows on the app 79% life, which means 79% fuel as we know now. It says running time is 10 and a half, 10 hours and 50 minutes, almost 11 hours. Now there's nothing plugged into it right now. So if I just let it go, it should run for 11 hours. It also has a total run time. So you'll get a total run time of hours on the app. That's kind of neat. So you'll know exactly. So if you buy one used, you can tell how long it's been run. And it has an output. So if I was to plug something into it, it would tell me how many watts it's outputting. And then it's got this eco and performance boost on it. If I turn that off, 
turn off eco mode. Now the RPMs have, have sped up. And perhaps we could use that if we're trying to start an air conditioner or something like that. I don't know, I still think it's gonna pull more than, eight, uh, more than 15 amps, so we're probably screwed on that one. So in the app also, there's a slide indicator on the bottom of the screen, and when it's not running, it says slide to start, and when it is running now, I'm gonna slide it to stop engine, and it asks me to confirm, in case you hit it by mistake. There you go, okay. Now it says slide to start engine. There we go. Awesome, <laughs> that's cool. I've always wanted a remote control, well, an internet, internet of things remote controlled generator. My larger champion generator over there has a key fob start, similar to what you have in your car to lock and unlock the doors. You can start it remotely, but you know, it's limited range. You get more than like 30 or 40 yards away, it doesn't work anymore. This one will connect, I've got it connect. I've got the generator itself connected to Starlink right now. And when I go home tonight, or this weekend, I'll be able to remotely start and stop this generator. So we're gonna do some toying with that. All right, just for grins, what I did was I plugged in the uh, plugged in the propane tank, I should say. This tank is empty, and I know it's empty, but I wanted to see what it would do. This thing has a air compressor type connection on that. So you can see right now, it's at 79%. And as soon as I put this on here, clip, it hops up to 99%. Now I've got the tank open right now, and I'm gonna assume that it can't, uh, and, it, and it won't run. I already tried it. Yep. So it's switched off of the gas right now and going to propane. So presumably, depending on how much gas you had in the tank, it might change that indicator from 99% to uh, whatever the gas is. I don't know. I don't know if that indicator out also reads gas. I'm gonna have to get a propane tank with some gas in it and make a decision on that or do some testing on that, I should say. But this thing's hard to push back in with only one hand. And now, huh, that shouldn't be. Okay, so it did start. For some reason, it's still saying 100% on the gas gauge. It's not connected to propane. So I'm gonna kill it there, it's saying 99%. And in the manual it says to reset it, all you do is turn it off and turn it back on again. Must be made of windows or something. Come back here, okay, not 79%, we're back to where we were. So it did start. After I disconnected the hose and hit electric start, it tried, it puttered for a minute, and then it started itself. So it did start when it switched back from propane, empty propane, to gasoline after you disconnect the hose. It's not gonna run on gasoline if the hose is connected. But the gauge, for whatever reason, the gauge didn't didn't come back. So after resetting it with the power button, the gauge comes back and there we are. 10 hours, 11 hours, nothing in it. And there we go. EcoFlow smart generator, built-in battery, dual fuel, internet connected. We're gonna do some testing with this on the battery system that's currently running my RV. We're going to do some more videos on this and see what kind of maintenance it will do about charging batteries. So stay tuned for more videos on this channel about that exact thing.